I, I was terrified in that Wendy show. What you just described was more like a porn shoot or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gino like a hot studio? Does he like to get sweaty in the undercarriage? Mm -hmm. There's not one ugly lawyer in Diamond and Diamond. Like someone comes in, it's like a brilliant litigator, and he has like a hair lip or something. They're like, mm, sorry. Mm -hmm. so Naked and wet, the Dan O'Toole story. Huh? Mm -hmm. Storybook penis, the Jay and Dan story. Dan was very wet and steamy. <laughs> Shut your mouth! You're listening to the Jay and Dan Podcast, presented by our good friends at Coors Light. Why don't we just start drinking in the morning? That's how Trade Center should be. Dance. Dancey, dancey, dance time. Hey, we're into March. We survived winter. People are Oh, but there's still going to be snow and stuff. Shut it! Wow. You are fired up today. We survived winter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, though. But there we, could be snow and stuff. Yeah, but still, it's going to melt the next day. Who gives a f***? What if it doesn't? What if, it, what if we get this cold snap? No. It's the week of March 5th, 2018. The TV people. So now we're on the YouTubes, I guess? Are we? Do they so post the whole podcast? Stuff? It's Chris on the YouTubes. Uh, I don't believe it's the whole podcast yet. It's uh, <laughs> snippets, teasers. Snippets. They just That's just fun. teasing it a little bit, and uh, we're getting the hang of it, so guys. It, don't it, worry. Well, a few things happen as we try to get ready for this podcast. Number one, Christoph and I were having a nice conversation, <laughs> then all of a sudden, Christoph came running in here and saying, uh, "I think a part of the conversation we just had." was broadcast on the Leaf game over several TSN radio stations. Just a couple of affiliates. So Joe Bowen, hey, holy Mackinac, you guys are... And I'm like, oh, yeah. I just took a dump. <laughs> God, it was great. It was Massive one of the cleaner crunch. conversations, luckily. It, honestly, it was as clean as it gets. We were just asking each other how our weeks were and, and talking about our time off. So thank God it wasn't anything worse than that. It usually is. Wow, that's that could have been a career ender. As a lesson, For that's me, a mainly. lesson, right? No, but that's a lesson. You know, the mic's always hot. Mic's always hot. Um, and then the other thing that happened was, like right now I'm sitting with my feet up on the desk, casual, and the TV people, I didn't know we had TV people looking at us, but they were very upset that I was slouching in my chair during this podcast. So I guess I got to gotta sit up or something? I feel like I'm sitting in a lifeguard chair. It is warm in this studio. <laughs> but my, Are they trying to sweat us out of this building? I, I don't find it warm. I it's find it very comfortable. steamy in here now. Oh, it's very, it's perfect. But last week you were dying. Oh, in our TV studio, yes. Yes. Uh, you uh, you may have a great idea there. Next Trade Center, we go, we go on air. Yeah. Just start just And start they come back to back. us. Let's, uh, let's see how many of these guys are deep. <sighs> well. We did an event like that once where. Uh, that was the, it was actually a, for a beer company. <laughs> <laughs> I said, guys, I'm going to uh, update people on how many beers I've had each time. They're like, yeah, do it. Yeah, you, you were pretty <laughs> gone by the end. It was fun. I was still making, I was actually reading better than when I had no beer in me. True enough. True enough. Yeah, maybe that's the secret. Maybe that would happen if we drank on Trade Center. All of a sudden, you'd become the best broadcaster in the world. Wait, Imagine Dragons going on tour. Hey, there you go. So uh, June 13th and 14th in Toronto. You going to go check them out? Grace Vanderwall is opening. No idea who that is. <laughs> this sounds made up. That is not a real person. Grace Vanderwall. Everyone's like, and then you show up, and it turns out it's like the lead singer's mom. <laughs> yeah, mom, get out there. Christoph, who's Grace Vanderwall? Not no idea. Not a real person. How much would you pay for an Imagine Dragons ticket? Oh, I would pay nothing for it. <laughs> and if someone tried to give me a free one, I'd be like, I would totally do that. But uh, our daughter is. Uh, Wait, I'm home with her that Grace night. Vanderwall, an American singer-songwriter. So, well, who said that? Wikipedia? You don't believe everything Wikipedia says. Yeah. She's 14. Oh, that's weird. That's just weird. Oh, man. I know who this is. She was on Americans Got... Uh, Americans. America's Got Talent. Americans Have Talent. And she sings this... Can we play this clip here? 
because my kids played this this song until um, I despised it because it makes no sense. Can I play this? I don't know. Can can he stuff? Well, I just need to play the start of it. Or maybe stuff can play it and it would sound better. Ugh. Yeah. He'll cover it up. I don't know my name. That makes no sense. I know. I said, girls, this is the stupidest song. That makes no song. sense. Everyone knows their own name. I don't know my name. That makes no sense. Unless she's been cap- captured, brainwashed, held captive for several years, and brainwashed. That might happen. Then in that case, should be should she be going on tour with Imagine Dragons? Maybe they're the ones who captured her. And they just gave her a name. From now on, you're Grace Vanderwall. And you'll open all our concerts. <laughs> and you'll sing a song called I Don't Know My Name. Come on, Got it'll it? be fun. Got it. So I've had this discussion on this podcast before about uh, the horrible music my kids listen to on the radio all whiny songs shout out to Coors Light our sponsor so I always change the channel immediately they're like you don't like any of our music they're like we don't like your you probably listen to bad songs too and I'm like you know what I probably did listen to music when I was your age oh we all did but I, I but I realized it it doesn't mean I have to listen to your music no I don't think you realized it at the time but you definitely did listen to we all did we all listen to bad tunes um I think, well, I, in an unironic fashion, listened to Vanilla Ice. I listened to... Hey, it holds up. MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, when they were big, at the very beginning, I was like, this is pretty cool, man. I like this Robbie Van Winkle guy. (laughs) And then a week later, I was like, oh, my God. How are these people, like, how's, like, Ed Sheeran going to hold up? Is he going to be still touring when he's 60? Somebody needs to explain this guy to me. Why is he so popular? What is it about him? He's, well, here's the thing. He looks like a hobbit. I kind of root for the guy because every person I know that met him said he's the nicest guy on earth. That's fair. I just don't, that's not, I'm sure he is a nice guy. I just don't understand why he's that popular. Is his music that unique? It's just like, like ballads and stuff, right? Yeah. Isn't he basically Brian Adams (laughs) 2.0? Kind of. But no. No, not actually. He's basically the new Brian Adams. So why don't they just get trot Brian Adams back out there? Uh I gotta look up something here. Hang on. Okay, we'll wait. How's everyone doing? Everyone good? We've got uh an update yeah. on our good friend Robin White today. We're gonna be calling him in, in mere moments. Our friend Robin White. Last time we talked to Robin, you may remember. He had uh, he had encountered what appeared to be a prostitute in East Hastings, Vancouver, and uh, had yeah the woman she put the finger in the hole yeah she put the finger in the hole. So speaking of poor lyrics, like I don't know my name, this Ed Sheeran song every time it comes on, I'm like, it must make people cry, people that don't have use of their legs because the first line in the song is. When your legs don't work like they used to before. Maybe he's just bombed. No, but it's just, and I can't sweep Maybe you off of polluted. your feet. Like I, every time I, first time I heard it, I'm like, okay, this is a song about someone who's in a wheelchair or something. No, it's about him sweeping someone off their feet. But when your legs don't but work like they used to before. lyrics aren't all going to be literal. Like not everyone's lyrics are going to be. Yes, they have to be. All the lyrics have to be literal. What ticket would you spend money on? Like Springsteen? Is that it? Springsteen. Um, Watchmen. So AC/DC. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the Watchmen. So we talk about the Watchmen all the time. If you don't know, big, biggish Canadian band in the 90s. At, at the time, I honestly thought they were going to be the next hip. They were so good live. Early 90s. They had a couple of albums that were big. They got played on the radio. It kind of faded out. They still do reunion tours. Fantastic band live. Uh, Danny Greaves, right, was the lead singer? Amazing. So great, great voice. And uh, anyway, Dan, I was recording my audio books for Anchor Boy and Number Two, which will be out later in March. The books will be out later in March on Audible if you want to listen to me talk for a few hours. Okay. 
And as I was recording them, I was talking to the engineer who was recording them for me, and, and we were talking about the Watchmen. And I said, I always wonder what those guys are doing. He's like, you don't know what Danny Greaves is doing? Danny Greaves is like one of Canada's leading like commercial jingle writers. What? Like he has essentially got a company that is extremely, extremely successful, and he does jingles for, for ads, for TV, for commercials, Good for radio. Good things grow in Ontario. Probably wrote that one. Uh, well, they don't use that one anymore. That was yeah, before. so that's what Danny Greaves is doing. He's a huge success. I want to know what jingles. Probably, uh, you know, the toilet jingle. <laughs> Toilets. Hey, we've got Toilets, come and get your toilets. No, that's not a real jingle. Come and get that's you know that one. That's not a real. All one. right. Well, hey, wow, let's so uh, let's give Robin a call. Uh, stuff. Danny, that's great. Robin, Robin, would you consider getting into uh, getting into jingle writing? Uh, I've considered that. Before, <laughs> yeah. How are you, For buddy? Sure. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, How are you guys doing? We're, we're doing great. We're great. Last time we talked to you, you had gotten right. yourself into a pretty precarious situation, and a lot of people were concerned. And a lot of people I talked to, they're like, no chance that happened. I'm like, yeah, this guy doesn't make step up. No, that uh, you can't make that up. I know, exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, What's the latest? Yeah, What's going so, on? So I understand you might have a new lady in your life? Yeah, I got a woman. I love it. Uh, yeah. It's not the same woman you talked about last time, I hope. No, no she's not a hooker. <laughs> as far as you know. As far as I know, she's not a hooker. But I'm pretty sure she's not because it took two two dates for her to have sex with me. So. Oh, okay. No, right. she's, she's not scandalous. She held out a little bit on you. Yeah. Tell us about her. How did you meet this uh, this lady? I met her on Tinder. Oh, very <laughs> nice. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you had us. I believe you. I believe you, too. <laughs> no, I, I met her. Uh, my buddy was actually broke up with his girlfriend, and then uh, so I went to the pub for the classic drowning of the Soros with him. So we got a little bit drunk, and we took the train home, and then there was a group of girls, and I think there was one guy. On the train, and I started yapping at him. <laughs> no, you started, why? Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. There's chicks, and I was like, huh, maybe I'll talk to the chicks. You know, try to see if I can get some get some chicks. And uh, <laughs> they told me to take pictures of them, so I grabbed their phone and uh, I started taking selfies of myself. It's always and a good then, move. Uh, and then that made him laugh. And then I, I was like, yeah, I'm Robin White. I'm a rock star from Saskatoon. And I'm on the Jay and Dad podcast. You guys should add me on Facebook. And then one of them did, and her name was Kate. And then uh, we've been dating for a couple months. Wow. Now. Wow. So she slid into your DMs or whatever they say. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, that's fantastic, weird. dude. That's great. Now, if yeah. you get married, you have to get married on a train. <laughs> Maybe the Silver Bullet train. Yes. Right? Yes. During yeah. the Silver Bullet tour, you guys will have your marriage. Well, or <laughs> your yeah, wedding. we start with the wedding in Vancouver, and then as we go across the country, it's the honeymoon. Oh, At, goodness me. Right? That would be fabulous. That would be wild, man. That would be absolutely wild. So um, is she uh, younger, older, um, Tell us. Get, well, she's she, a bit older than me. Just a few years older than I am. Like five, yeah. ten? Five years. Okay. Five years nice older. work. Okay. Like she's that. experienced. Like she's she's going to teach you the ways of the world. Yeah, she's teaching me things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teaching her some stuff, too. <laughs> you know. <laughs> she trains me and I train her. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I like uh, what, what's the latest with the job? Have you smoothed things over with your boss? Oh, I got a new job again. Oh, oh okay. okay. Tell us. Yeah, I make. Uh, there's this island in Vancouver called Mitchell Island. It's like an industrial island, and I uh, 
got a job on that island making, uh, you know those sea cans that go on the shipping ships? Oh, yeah. Come, come in. So we take those things and then we, like, make buildings out of them, you know, like, cut holes and put doors and windows and stairs. I saw and this. This, this was like a dragon's den pitch that these people were selling these things. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I think there's a lot of companies that do it, but... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, the one I'm with is uh, pretty good. Like it's, So they turn these cargo containers into, like, apartments or offices? Um, If it's a high-end one, it'll be something like that. Uh, but... We're kind of more like sheds. Yeah, like store, like uh, storing oil, or we make like training facilities for firefighters. So they'll oh, like, yeah, okay. There'll be however many stories, and then they'll put the thing on fire and train in them. You've been in Vancouver for a while now. Um, are you? Se- yeah. Does it feel like home now? Are you? Are you settled in there, or do you still miss uh, the mighty Saskatoon? Yeah, I still miss that place. Uh, I don't know. This place is kind of... I think it's going to take a while for it to feel like home, you know. Mm -hmm. I miss Saskatoon a lot. I don't miss the cold winters. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But uh, Dan says the winter's over. Dan says it's over. Yeah, we we reach March. We're good. Well, no, Saskatchewan gets a couple more extra months. A couple more? Might. I'd say, yeah. Might. Yeah. It ain't over. It definitely ain't over. Yeah, I remember when I lived in Fort McMurray, uh, it snowed once on like June 1st. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bunch yeah. of Yeah, right up into the there for sure. Hey, Robin, uh, you remember when we let, met you last year, we were in Saskatoon for, what's it called, Toolsy? What was the event? The, the, uh, that Rock was the Rush Game. Spring Invasion. The Spring Invasion. Oh, Spring Invasion. And the Rush game, yep. Right. So Spring Invasion last year. Well, guess what, buddy? We're going back to host Spring Invasion again this year in Saskatoon. We're going back. Oh, sweet. Yeah, bro. You should should make your way up for that. That'd be pretty cool. How wild. Maybe we can hang out. Well, how wild would it be if you came out on stage with us and, Uh, uh, and you introduced the bands and stuff like that, maybe sang a little bit? That'd be sweet. Okay, we'll talk to the people that we know. We might be able to make it happen. Whitney, I I bet they could, they'd be okay with that. Oh yeah, Waddy will be there for sure. And Whitney. And Witsy. Is what? Oh, that's that her nickname, Witsy. Waddy and Witsy. No, Whitney. I know her name. Oh, okay. Just, no, that's is, not her nickname. Is that Roger Millions' uh, daughter? No, she no. does another shift. Okay. Yeah, Roger Million's daughter, also a uh, a DJ on Rock 102. Well, um, eventually, I'd like us to become DJs on Rock 102. That's it. that's our that's our <laughs> calling right there. Is rock radio morning guys? I think that would be so much oh fun. Oh my god! Oh man, you I love that. Make everyone piss their pants. Right, and then you could, you could come on with us. We could all go back to Saskatoon. Uh, well, we have to wait till Wadi and Witty. Retire. No, they're gone. Sorry, <laughs> Waddy and Witty. It's over. You're being replaced. I love I love Waddy. I love Witty. We had a great time with them last year. But uh, but it's done. Tulsi and I, Rock 102, starting in April. <laughs> morning, guys. Robin White, our sidekick, coming on every morning. Sweet. Sweet. Thanks for coming on, buddy. All righty. Uh, but uh, stay stay cool, stay out of trouble, and uh, I'm very happy to, to hear that you're you found love and uh, and uh, you know stay away from East Hastings. Yeah. Hey, hey, what about Ben Penner? Did he get some love yet? Ben Teller, your buddy there. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I last we heard from him, he uh, we haven't kind of updated uh, the situation post New Year's Eve because we could uh, give him a call. Toolsy, Toolsy wanted yeah, to give take him a, a little. Call. He's hilarious. I like yeah, that. we needed it. We needed to. Tool, Sorry. Toolsy wanted to take a little break, but I think maybe maybe it's time to to catch up with Ben because I know people are curious, as curious as you are, Robin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. You know, it would be good as we let you go, Robin. It would be good if you took Ben out on the town one night. I feel like he needs a night like that. Like a, something a little dangerous. Me too.
take Ben out? Yeah, man. <laughs> well, he's got to come to Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, we can make it happen. I'm not allowed to go into America yet. You're not allowed? What? Why not? No, I got to sort some things out. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. We keep peeling this onion. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Do you want to talk about it or should we save it for another time? Maybe we'll tease it for the next time. Okay, tease it. Okay, we'll tease it for the next time. Buddy, it's always great talking to you. Stay cool. We'll talk to you soon. Ready. see ya. See ya, Robin. That's Robin White. All right, let's Robin. call up Ben Teller. Let's do it. We're going to check in on him. Uh, Robin okay? Yeah, I think he's actually great. Okay. He seems great. I The last comment about the America concerned me a bit. Like maybe something, because you should be able to go into the states, unless he doesn't have a passport. I, if it's as simple as a passport, then he really oversold that. But I got the impression, <laughs> and maybe it's just me. And you listeners, just tell me if I'm, if I'm seeing, if I'm reading too much between the lines. But I got the impression that perhaps there's a reason that the Americans don't want Robin down there, and I want to know what that is. But not right now. I want to. We want to wait a bit. Um, a lot of people sent me uh, tweets saying, "Oh, lift the ban on Ben Teller." Ben Teller used to work on our podcast down in America. We didn't ban him. I just. It's just like if you have cereal every single day for, uh, for three months. Which I basically did in Korea, by the way. You need to take a break. Uh, ben Teller. Why? Yes. See, again. Yes. Just, just yes. nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> oh, I missed, dude. Guys, this uh, is, I feel like it's been so long. Yeah, way too long, buddy. Way too long. I we missed you very much. Nobody missed you more than Dan. Um, and Robin White. We just had Robin White on from Vancouver, and he was asking about you, wondering how how you're doing, if you found love. So, I guess we should get right into it. First of all. Um, the New Year's Eve girl. Where, where did we leave that? Is that long gone? Did anything happen with that woman? Nothing happened, and we're not even talking. <laughs> she, she's out. That, she's out. That writing was on the wall there, so zero surprise. Uh, next. Uh, well, you know, it was tough. I, 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 I looked at her and I said, "Hey, where is this going? Like, you're playing games with me." And she's like, "I'm going to Peru to clear my mind." And <laughs> going to Peru. That was it. Going to Peru. Yeah, when yeah, someone it, when someone says they're going to Peru, that usually means it's Yeah, you know yeah. what? She doesn't deserve me. That's no, right, Ben. Okay. So what's the latest? Yeah, what's happening? Uh, what's happening uh, what's happening okay. now? So I spent like two months not really dating. I, I was a little heartbroken by this New Year's girl. Was and, this self imposed uh, or was it just uh there was no one willing to date? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I made the conscious decision to take care of Ben and then return, get some more confidence and get back out there. So it's great that you uh, you guys want to check. It's like the past two weeks, I've really been like, all right, I'm ready to get back out there. Nice. Um, so, I mean, if there's a Jewish singles event in L.A., I'm there. Um, if someone wants to set me up, I'm in. So I... Uh, I, ironically enough, met this girl on New Year's, and we didn't talk for a few months after. Saw her at an event a couple weeks back, and she's like, hey, uh, we should hang out. And I'm like, yeah, we should hang out. So the next morning, we did yoga together. Okay. Uh, that was like the, you know, an easy way. And then she's like, what are That's you doing? That's so I'm like, LA well, of you, by the way. That's so LA. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing now? I'm like, oh, I don't have any plans. Uh, I was like, come over. I'll make you breakfast. So Whoa. she oh. comes out. So she Whoa. comes over. It, it was a morning class. She comes over, we drink coffee, we make breakfast, uh, we hang out, we run some errands, whatever. It, and that was that, and it was very casual. And uh, she works down the street, and she was like, hey, next day, can you meet me for coffee? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So uh, ironically enough, I'm seeing her in like two hours tonight. Whoa. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm a, little, I'm a little excited. She's cool. Dan, she's a big hipster. Oh, perfect. Um, like so, uh, she, she so, wore like black denim jacket and black jeans when we went out like a couple of weeks ago. So she, sounds like she's a goth girl. Sounds very goth. I like that. Like goth uh, hipster. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I'm keeping my options open, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I'm not really like committing to one girl. I'm taking things slow. I'm really taking your advice, Dan. 
I think there has to be, like, Dan, I've learned this, you know, you, back in the day, I didn't know you, but I'm sure you just, you just killed it. So I feel like I should listen to you more. Thank you. Now, Um, uh, well, I'm not (laughs) sure about that, but, okay, so wait, Ben, now, um, this girl, has the sex happened? Uh, no. Oh, no, no, okay. No. Uh, has any no, little, is... any light petting, anything? Just a little kiss. Oh. Uh, I, I think, you know, we're not going to jinx anything, but tonight could oh. be, uh... Tonight, you tonight? Know. That you lose your don't... virginity? Don't, don't tell anybody that. I mean, no one's going to want to date a virgin where are you, in L.A. Where are you taking her? This is all, you know, I don't really know. I think uh, she works down the street, so she's like, I'll come over after work. I said, great. I have her favorite whiskey here, so we'll, yes. she likes she likes some whiskey, so we'll, we'll drink a little whiskey. And then there's like a like a speakeasy that I, I know, like, she's never been to, so I'll, like, maybe take her to a speakeasy. Okay, a speakeasy. Very nice, very nice. Dan uh, is making the, a face the, 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 at the yeah, word that's speakeasy. Good, right? yeah. the, the, it's the also Roger. known as a bar. Oh, the Roger Room. Roger. Yeah, it's like my, uh, and then, guys, I have. I need some advice. I uh, recently rekindled something with like a forty-one-year-old. Whoa! Uh, whoa! Whoa! Hold on, you buried the lead a little bit here, Ben. Yeah, I know. So, so uh, for rekindled. So you were having sex with a forty-one-year-old. Was it casual? What? Give us the backstory. Wait, wait, I don't. No, I don't want to. Like, we we went on. We went out. We kissed. And then all these other girls came into the picture, right? Because it was a it was a wild time for me, and I uh, oh my I stopped God. talking to the and I stopped talking to the forty one year old, and I felt like I should hit her up. So I'm going to see her this week. So uh, sexy, like tell me about this forty uh, one year old. Where? How did you meet her? Uh, I met her. Uh, how did I meet her? Through like friends of friends of old. Places, you know, it's kind of complicated. This, but this I sounds uh, so uh, fishy. That's uh, friends of friends. Sounds of made old up. Places. What? Uh, no, no, she's real. I've uh, got she's... friends and friends and friends in old oh. places. But, but, but guys, I need some advice. Dry. What do I? What do I do with a forty-one-year-old? Like, I don't. I'm nervous. Uh, yeah, everything. She's not gonna f- have osteoporosis. Everything, buddy. You're gonna do everything you possibly can, and then some. She's so I take ready. her for a drink. Yeah, what, what, what do I do? Just right to the bedroom. Just just don't even, just walk up to her and just be like, let's go f- right now and uh, let's go to your place and see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? Actually, pretty good advice. Just go for it. You this just 41-year-old hey, wants some. Lady, <laughs> you don't have much longer to live. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, let's no, just I get this done. Now. Let, let's just let's just do this now. <laughs> it's almost over for you <laughs> on Earth. <laughs> it, it's such a it's such an, a weird thing. Like I'm out at I, the first time we went out, I was at a bar and I'm like, she, she's 41. I'm like yeah. 13 years older than me. It's crazy. Is she like sexy? Does she give off a vibe like I want I want some young peen? I mean, the truth is, and don't tell anybody. Okay. Let's keep this between us. Uh, she mentioned on that date that uh, she likes dating like 27-year-olds. Yes, yes. This, yes, because this uh, us good. as older people, we steal younger people's youth. That's what she's going yeah. to do. It, she's going to suck the youth out of you. And and also, uh, we don't have any sexual energy anymore. And and you young people do. And that that's what she's craving. She wants she wants young Ben Teller sexual peen. Oh, I gotta make sure I hit the gym and do some push-ups before no, we hang out. I gotta get the blood it. flowing. Just get get right in there and just go to town. Does she have big boobs? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, oh, buddy. God, this is where did this conversation come from? I this lo- is horrible. I love it. It's fantastic. This is the woman you should be with. Forget about the uh, the other girl. Well, you know, I hope it goes well with the other the whiskey uh, drinking hipster. I think that that sounds nice too. But yeah, I can't wait to hear what she laments upon. <laughs> I, I, th- I think if I learned anything, like I, we were talking like November, October, November, right? It was a crazy time for me and all this. Yeah. And you guys were like, do this. And I just like, I got to slow it down. I got to, I can't get too committed. Mm-hmm. I got to reevaluate, you know, is this girl worth my time? And I can't show all my cards right away. You know, I feel like I've learned a lot. 
So I'm trying to that's good. You know, new year, new me. That's good. I like that. I think that's, that's very positive, actually. Uh, Thanks for coming on, Ben. No, no, hold on. Dan, hold on. Hold on. Dan, so, Dan, I have a question, though. But literally, people are tweeting me, why does Dan hate Ben? And I'm wondering, like, Dan, did you say something mean about me to other people? Nope. Oh. No, they are. Uh, we mentioned this before because people keep tweeting us and saying, why is there a ban? I said, no, we just needed a break. There was no but ban. Guys, also on unrelated news, I quit my job. Oh. And I was thinking, I'll come to Canada and hang out with you guys for I a little bit. I love this idea. Uh, and here's another thing that Why I love. Eh? Um, Dan's hometown is looking for an injection of youth. And okay. new nope. ideas. No places available. And Everything's sold out. My understanding Sorry. is there Real estate, are very hard to come plenty by. of homes and apartments available. And in fact, Dan himself has a guest room. I like the idea of you moving up here, staying with Dan for a couple nope. of months. Guess who has lots of room? Jay. Uh, uh, I've got uh, I've got two new cats. They take up guy. You're a cat I mean, guy. Look, Dan, how about we do like how about we do like split custody? Dan, you take me Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Jay, you take me when you want to go out with your wife. I'll, I'll babysit and Whoa. I'll help you out. Okay. And and Dan, me, you, we can just you know yeah. hang out. A couple of bachelors hanging out, um, uh, get, getting getting loaded, going going on double dates. Yeah, there's a backlog for uh, for uh, working visas. So, <laughs> well, uh, no, I'll, I'll, what's the rule in Canada? Like 30 days? How long can I come without a visa? You're allowed here for four days, and then you have to get. You out. might have to marry a 41 year old Canadian woman, um, someone like Belinda Stronic. That I think you should do it. I think I, I like the idea of you coming up here, buddy. I think you'd thrive in Canada. They'd love you up here. All right, I think I'm gonna pack my bags and just move in with you, Dan. Oh man, that'd be great. Oh, that'd be so great. We can, hey, yeah. Well, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Maybe I'll maybe I'll call Tim, have him set me up, and you know we can do the whole social media thing again. It'd be like, it'd be like old times. Yeah, we've got someone for that. Uh, okay. Ben, before you go, Ben, do you happen to have a would you rather for us? Oh man, the truth is I don't have one. Oh, good, darn good. it! Thank you. There, you saved yourself but, there. But I, I, uh, I decided like. If me and Dan are going to mend the relationship, yep. I can't come in with a "Would you rather" really hot. So exactly, I have a list, well played, Ben. But the goal is the goal is to save them, and then when Dan brings you back on next time, just rapid fire. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Okay, well, listen, I'm I am a little. So you you quit the job? Do you have a, a means of taking care of yourself, or are you just? I mean, look, there's a lot of, a lot of yoga. Uh, a lot of cooking, a lot of Netflix. Uh, yeah, I'm living. Uh, but how are you going to pay your bills? Yeah, how are you paying the bills? Would be. Uh, yeah, we we haven't crossed that bridge yet. Okay. I mean, this is a this is a, this is a crazy time for me, guys. I you know maybe I'll travel. No, I uh, yes. no. Uh, in, yes. in, in all seriousness, I uh, I'm running the foundation full time. Um, so that's that's what I'm doing, raising money, and then. Uh, reevaluate in a couple months when uh, my plate is cleared. Can you, before we let you go in all seriousness, uh, all jokes aside, tell us a little bit about the foundation very quickly. Uh, sure. Uh, it's called uh, Cuck Fancer. I enjoy so that name. Yeah, it's, you know, F-U-C-K, right? Just put that up. And it's, uh, we raise funds for young adults that uh, are affected by cancer. And we give out financial grants um, every year to kind of ease them back into this uh, crazy world. So just like release some stress and we travel to colleges, we throw events. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. I love it. And uh, that's what I'm doing. I love it, buddy. Nice and, work, buddy. And and before we let you go, uh, you know where you should go? Korea. Teach English. We met all these uh, young people uh, teaching English and they, in Korea. None of them, they said, oh, I came over here for a year. None of them want to come back. They're like, yeah, I'm standing over here They're forever. They're the best time. You could be that guy. Teach English in Korea. So not a rabbi in Mexico. Now we're teaching English in Korea. Yeah, that's the better option. It's a whole different... It's like it's something you never thought you'd do. It's a total 180. That's what you need in your life. You need to do something you'd never thought you'd do. And that would be teaching English in Korea. Meet a nice Korean woman. She'll take care of you. Uh, eat a lot of delicious food. Life would be good. Wow, this sounds... 
that I'm, I'm, I'm writing this down as we speak. I'm really coming up with, this is like on my long list. This is we'll move to Korea. Ben, right you aren't good at go, saying goodbye, right? Just hey, uh, and, and, then, for, and then one more thing. Uh, but then if that doesn't work out, uh, you can move in with Dan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, remember, Dan, we were going to go to Vegas and watch like baseball. Nope. You watch, <laughs> Don't you watch like Japanese baseball with the sound off when you're in <laughs> Vegas? We could do that for a long time. Okay. Or, Dan, we could... You could come to Vegas. I mean, there's a lot of oh, options. Yeah. We should ask people what they want us to do together. Yes. Let's yes. do this. Ben and Dan, mm, no. summer of 2018. Yes. Let's take a three day trip somewhere. I love the it. The viewers can suggest where we go. And we'll I bet record you. the whole thing oh. and we'll sell it to Fox. Absolutely. And, and I'll tell you what sell it to Fox? Yes. And, <laughs> and I bet you, I bet you that uh, our friends at Coors Light would kick in some money. To get you guys to wherever uh, the listeners want you to go together, because it's important the two of you are together. If for I was three paid days. a substantial sum, yes, I would do it. No, whoa, no. Whoa, this is huge! All right, Jay, we yeah. made progress. Let's let's have people suggest where me and Dan will travel. Fifty k, fifty k, I'll do it. And let's let's do something. <laughs> I like the idea of you guys going to Vegas. Fifty k, I'll spend three days with Ben. Three days in Vegas with Ben. Three days. Fifty k. I'm in. Three or, days, no sleeping. No sleeping, just just sharing booze, we have to share a bed. craps. We have to share a bed. No, we could share a, a room. Hotel room. We could share a room, not a bed. Let's not get weird. Okay. You're right. We would share. We could, would share a room. But, not but a bed. if but if the listeners wanted you to share a bed and they paid you hundred k, for a hundred thousand dollars, you'd share a bed with Ben for three nights. Sure. God, that'd be great. And then we'd have a camera on you, and God, that'd be so. Uh, I would ben, wear, ben, I start the uh, all time. start the GoFundMe. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that going as we speak. I look forward to uh, the summer of 2018. That could Some, be Ben and Dan. It is gonna be the summer of Ben and Dan. And all right, uh, guys, cheers. Love you, buddy. Have a good night. Love you guys too. That's, That's it. That's our podcast. That's it. That's how it ends. Wow, what couple of amazing updates right there. Dan, you are uh, you're speechless right now. Uh, do we have time for a quick clip? Christoph was just asking if we. Yeah, want. yeah. Let's. Uh, so someone sent us yeah, this. I know what you're talking about here. In Utah, Christoph, can you explain it? I didn't, I didn't really read the tweet or see the video. All right. It looks like in Utah, the House of Representatives made a rap video about how a bill becomes a law, and it is awful. So let's <laughs> okay. Play. Give it a listen. Okay. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yep. Now, this is a story all about how our bills get flipped into a law. I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there. I'll tell you how a bill becomes law, and this is our chain back. Okay. In the legislator's mind, an idea is raised. In the law book is where they spend most of their day. <laughs> Drafting out, Max now, hardly relaxing, all cool. And I'll introduce some bills inside of House Chambers. We're holding a couple <laughs> of guys to start reviewing the bill. Are they making changes in committee on the Hill? They may get in one little fight, but it's just because they care. They say we're moving this bill back to the floor and we'll argue it there. Speaker Hughes whistles for a vote and the answer is clear. And the bill passes and goes over the Senate to hear. If it passes the Senate, then the bill is probably fair. You thought it was law, but it's just not quite there. It goes up to the governor to determine its fate. And if it's good, Herbert might even be signing it later. Look at that bill. It's finally there. Sitting as law, ready to be declared. Wow. Uh, wow. They needed a better audio guy. Yeah. Overall, the idea was... Uh, it had potential, but the audio was all over the map. Uh, a lot of the stuff didn't rhyme. I guess that's why it got... It did get a lot of attention, didn't it, Stuff? It did. Yeah, 1.26 million views. Hey, what? maybe they achieved their goal. They kind of did. They got, they got what they wanted. A lot of views. You pulled a Simpsons clip that was better. Uh, yeah, we got from an earlier Simpsons episode. Uh, it's called an amendment to be, and it's how a law, I guess, same concept, better song. Here it comes. Hey, who left 
dumped all this garbage on the steps of Congress. I'm not garbage. I'm an amendment to be. Yes, an amendment to be. And I'm hoping that they'll ratify me. There's a lot of flag burners who have got too much freedom. I want to make it legal for policemen to beat them. Cause there's limits to our liberties. At least I hope and pray that there are. Cause those liberal freaks go too far. <laughs> this is uh, a, pa- a parody of the schoolhouse rock. Yeah. So that that's the difference uh and audio technician, uh, production values, writers. That's the difference that makes. Yeah, that's right. Um, that that was pretty good. This has been a fun podcast. I got to say, this has just been a blast. It's been a Dan, wild journey. I, Dan is, uh, it feels like he's been on a roller coaster of emotion. Yeah. And uh, Men feed my mouth. And uh, it's been wild for you. Last month has been crazy. Korea... And you get back, talk to Robin, Ben. It's nuts. <laughs> how many times did Ben mention how crazy his life was? <laughs> Here's my question for you. And don't, can, when can we start talking about your dating life on this podcast? Can we ever do that? No. Um, <laughs> but yes. Ben, Dennis Gluki. Ben <laughs> made it sound like he, like, George Clooney wishes that he had as much going on as Ben. Well, he did have a lot going on there. Nothing came of it. <laughs> Nothing came of it. But, uh, you know, he had a lot of irons in the fire. And then that fire went out. And those irons went cool. Yeah. And Cold then, iron. This the 40... Ben Teller story. <laughs> Cold iron. <laughs> That's his nickname. Cold iron. <laughs> That's cool. Let's check in on Cold Iron. See how he's doing. Um, I'm intrigued by this 41 year old. I'm picturing like a Lisa Ann type. It's hilarious though. We are a few years away. From, like I'm 42. You what? You're 43. Yeah. And when Ben mentions a 41 year old, I picture like a 60 year old. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> like it's well, that, a person that's, that's younger than us. Because he's picturing it that way. I know. But no, I, it would be nice to meet you, Sonny. No, come nibble on my labia. <laughs> it hasn't been touched in decades, and I'd like you to nibble on it like some fine Edam cheese. Did you order us a carriage? Uh, there's Uber. What's that? <laughs> I No, but I do picture Lisa Ann. By the way, how we, old's Lisa Ann? A, a mid forties. I can't believe she was on our podcast at Fox. She was, and guess what? And hey, I, whoa! Milan Lucic just scored. scored. Milan Lucic wow. scored, guys. We're 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 his lucky charm. Uh, first goal in like twenty seven or twenty eight <laughs> games. Yeah, it's a long time for Milan to not have scored. Um, what I was gonna say, and I don't know how I found this information out. I'm sure someone told me. Lisa Ann is back in adult films. She's back in porn. Ooh, need the money? She's 45 stuff. 45. Hmm. Wow. So she's back, Toolsy. Maybe Ben Teller and Lisa Ann. They met that day. Maybe that's the... Maybe He said 41. Maybe he just thought she was 41. Can you imagine if it was Lisa Ann the whole time? And he was like, I don't know. I'm not sure how to approach this. Uh, okay, well, Producer Tim is going to be wondering where we are. Yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, uh, to the Jane Dan podcast sponsored by Coors Light. We'll uh, talk to you next week. Yeah, we will.